Hello everybody, welcome back to Kannur's online classes. So in the previous class we have studied about circulation. Then we have studied about the structure of heart, arteries, veins, how it functions. Now let us study about the blood, which is a fluid connective tissue. Now blood, the moment we say blood, the thing that comes to your mind is a liquidy red color fluid which comes out when any injury takes place on a body, right? So you call it as blood. Do you think blood is made up of only one component? No children, it is made up of four main components. That is RBC, the expansion is red blood cells. It is also called as red blood corpuscles. The next one is WBC, white blood cells. Again it is also called as white blood corpuscles. Then we have blood platelets and plasma. So the blood, uh, the components of blood, there are four components of blood. RBC, WBC, blood platelets and plasma. Now, blood is liquid. It, you call it as a fluid connective tissue. Now whatever minerals, in the previous topics we have studied about because of digestion, the proteins, vitamins all get diffused into the blood and these proteins have to pass on to each and every part of your body where muscles are present and this work of transportation is carried out by blood. That is why blood is a fluid connective tissue which connects all the organs, right? Now, since there are four components of blood, each component of blood is having its own function. Let us start with RBC. Expansion as I said you, it is red blood cells. Now, this red blood cells are skeletal in structure or you can say disc-like shape. They are disc-like shape. And the color of these red blood cells is, as the name refers, it is a red in color. Now, the next question may come. Why is this cell red in color? This cell is red in color because of a pigment called hemoglobin. I repeat, the, this cell is red in color because of a pigment called hemoglobin. Now, now, what is the function of this hemoglobin? The function of this hemoglobin is to carry the oxygen. The oxygen that we take while inhaling. Okay? And this oxygen is used as fuel for the conversion of energy. Right? So, the function of RBC is it carries oxygen when we inhale and when we exhale we give out carbon dioxide. So again it carries a carbon dioxide. Now the next cell is WBC that is white blood cells. Now children each country is having an army right. If any invader comes into the country what are army soldiers do? They fight against it. Okay, same way our body is also having a mechanism of army and this army is with this white blood cells. That is why it provides body defense and when the germs attack to our body. See, we are exposed to so many germs in the atmosphere, right? So when these germs invade our body or enter our body, our body is protected by WBC. Now, these white blood cells, they are not having a particular shape, okay? When the germ enters, if this is the germ, right? It engulfs the germ, right? And dissolves it, okay? It engulfs the germs and kills it because of the enzymes which are present in it. And it also provides antibodies. So the function of WBC is it provides body defense that is defense mechanism of our body. It enters the germs which have invaded our body and it provides the antibodies. So the next one is blood platelets. One of the important component of blood. Blood platelets. Now children when you get some injury, a small injury, I don't mean a big injury, a small injury like because of some knife and all, if your hand gets cut, right? Some blood oozes out for some time. Then later after some time, the blood stops oozing out. Oozing out means coming out. This I can show you with the diagram. 
if this is your hand, if you get a minor injury, the blood oozes out of your body, right? Then after some time, you will find that a solid structure has come over here, right? This formation of solid structure, we call it as blood clotting. What do we call it as? It is called as a blood clotting. Now how this blood clotting has taken place? So, now when the blood is oozing out children, as I said you, blood consists of WBC, sorry, RBC, WBC and platelets. And platelets. These platelets get accumulated at the area where the blood is oozing out and forms a thick network. And this thick coating you call it as blood clotting because of which the blood does not come out of the body. Just imagine if this blood platelets were not there in the body, then the blood would just ooze out of the body until and unless you get a medical aid. Sometimes in such cases, the whole blood which is present in the body may come out, right? So, blood platelets are one of the important components in our body, okay? Next, moving to plasma. Now, as I said you, RBC is a cell, WBC is a cell, platelet is also a cell-like structure and these solid particles have to be carried to all the parts, right? And this fluidity medium is provided by this plasma. So, plasma is a yellow color fluid, but you don't find the yellow color fluid in the blood, it is because it is a overtaken by the red blood cells. Okay? Now, plasma is a yellow, yellow color fluid which consists of 90% of water. It is because of this liquid or fluid substance, the blood is transported to all the parts of the body. So, it consists of 90% of water and 10% of organic substances. Now, you may ask me, what are the organic substances? The organic substances are proteins, they are the hormones and albumin, globulin and some inorganic minerals. So they constitute the plasma. You can say that plasma constitute about 55 to 60 percent of blood and RBC constitutes about 45 to 50 percent of blood. Another liquid fluid which is present in the body and plays an important factor is lymph. Lymph is just similar to that of blood but there is absence of the red color in the lymph and it contains less proteins than the blood. So it helps in the immune system of the body. Now lymph is an yellowish fluid which escapes from the blood capillaries. As I have said you, blood arteries and veins are the blood vessels of the body. These blood vessels end up into thin vessels. Right? These thin network of vessels are called as blood capillaries. Okay? So these thin vessels, blood-like vessels are called as blood capillaries. So this yellowish fluid escapes from this blood capillaries and enters into the intercellular spaces. And enters into the intercellular spaces. And this is consisting of less proteins com uh, compared to that of blood. And it enters into the lymphatic system of the body. And this lymph, which you call it as lymph, it flows from the tissues to heart, assisting the transportation and destroying the germs. As I said you, this lymphatic system, it adds up to the human system of the body. When the germs invade our body, they are brought to a particular point which you call it as lymph node. It is just a structure, this, a structure like this, where the germs are brought here and killed. What you can say, encounter of the germs takes place, right? And the function of it is destroying the germs which have entered the body. And lymph plays a very important role in the human system of body. So till now we have studied about transportation in human body which takes place by 
plant. Now let us study about the transportation, how it takes place in plant shape. As a human body is having an organ that is heart, which pumps the blood to all the parts of the body. But do you think there is any organ in plants which carries this materials from one part of the plant to another part of the plant? So they are having a different mechanism or you can say different pathway by which the transportation takes place, right? This transportation takes place by conducting tissues. What do you call? Conducting tissues. So the two main conducting pathways of the two main conducting tissues are xylem and phloem. So you, have, you might have studied about xylem and phloem in your smaller classes or lower classes, right? So xylem and phloem are called as conducting tissues. Each tissue is having its own function. Now let us start with xylem. These tissues are nothing but they are pipe-like structures. Again, as we have in our body like arteries and veins, plants are also having this conducting tissue which are pipe-like structure. Now first of all, let us study about xylem. Xylem is a unidirectional. That means the, whatever nutrients it carries, it carries in one direction only. That is from roots to all parts of the plant. So, since it is unidirectional, that means the nutrients flow in one direction, that is from roots to all the parts of the plant. It carries water and minerals. Xylem tissue is responsible to carry the nutrients or the minerals which are present in the soil and the water from roots to all the parts of the plant. And during this process, no energy is utilized. It does not require energy. Then how is that? These water molecules and nutrients which are present in the soil, they move through this stem to all the parts of the plants. Right? Question occurs. So, this into water vapor and then it evaporates into the clouds. 
right same process takes place here and during this a process of evaporation a suction force is created and this suction force is called as a ascent of sap during this suction is nothing but pulling up right suction is nothing but pulling up so when the suction force is created by this sunlight or the process of evaporation the water comes out from the plants in the form of a vapor right so this pulling section is ascent of sun and by the process by which these plants are losing this water is called as transpiration let me repeat it once more children xylem which is a pipe like structure is a water and mineral conducting tissue what the water which is present in the soil and the minerals which are present in the soil it absorbs it and this absorption or movement of this water and minerals from roots to all the parts takes place by ascent of sap that is suction force which is created by the light or heat right then when it reaches the parts aerial parts through which the water comes out right this process of losing water from the aerial parts of the plant is called as a transpiration i hope this concept is clear to you so transpiration it's a very important question children process of transpiration the process of loss of water in the form of vapor i have told you the water is lost in the form of a vapor from aerial parts of the plant is called as a transpiration now what are the functions of this transpiration now xylem it absorption and upward movement of water and minerals by creating a pool this creating a pool is nothing but ascent of sap and it helps in temperature regulation in plants as blood helps in temperature regulation in the body of humans in the same way this transpiration process helps in temperature regulation in plants so this was all about the water and mineral conducting tissue xylem next we shall move to the next conducting tissue that is phloem as i said you xylem is responsible to carry water and minerals phloem is responsible to carry the products now the product refers to the food that is prepared by the process of photosynthesis as you know in previous class i have told you about the process of photosynthesis leaves are responsible to carry out the process of photosynthesis whatever food is produced or glucose is produced it is stored in the form of starch or glucose in parts of the plant so the parts of the plant which it is stored is one is stem another is roots roots like potato carrot radish these are the roots which we consume and this is the place where the food is stored it is also stored in fruits also right so these are the places where the food is stored now the food which is produced here in leaves it has to go to these parts that is stem roots then fruit and this transportation work is carried out by conducting tissue that is phloem so phloem is responsible to carry the food which is prepared by the process of photosynthesis from leaves to all the parts of the plant right and this process is called as translocation translocation is nothing but transportation of food from leaves to different parts of the plant so translocation is the process carried out in a phloem so this is all about the two conducting tissues that is xylem and phloem which constitutes in the transportation of plants